So game two of this alumni doubleheader to begin. This is QCC alum David Russell along with Joe Massey and the coach Mike Kerr. The alumni uh, played an entertaining first game. The red team scored 101 points in a 12-point wow. victory. Now they team up with the black team and take on the current Tigers. So who's the home team? I guess the, the current Tigers. <laughs> They're wearing the white uniform. I want to ask... Uh, Mike Kerr, who's coached some alumni games. What do, what do you make of one of these games as a coach? Well, David, I mean, as a coach, uh, alumni day was always very special, and it was always one of our favorite days of the year. You know, you get a chance to get some of the former players back in, back in the building and, you know, reminisce about the times that they were, they were with you. And it's always a lot of, a lot of positive, uh, a lot of joking around, and a lot of remembering mostly the good things. And, and if there were, you know, sometimes we remember some of the things that weren't so easy, but we remember them in a positive way. And, and uh, I'm really impressed with, with Queensboro. Every year they have this alumni event, and they really have a terrific turnout, and, and it really seems like a, a great event for them. And I'm glad they, uh, they do it every season. The alumni take a quick 2 nothing lead. Here is a question. Do you use uh, alumni refs or regular refs? Oh, this? yeah. You, would you know that? No. Uh, all right. I think I think uh, I think one or two of these refs did the last game. Okay. Um, no, they're the regular uh, they're the regular refs for. Oh, the, right. For the regular junior college league. The shot from Peralta is no good. It's like kind of tough if you're coaching this game and you're coaching the current team, as that shot is good. And it's 4 nothing alumni, 50 seconds in. This is kind of a lose-lose. Either you win and you just beat some alumni who are tired and old, or you lose and you just lost to some alumni who are tired and old. Well, I mean, I, you know, as a, if I was coaching in a game like this, I mean, I would just use it as, as a glorified practice. I mean, it's a little more pressure than practice. I mean, you're not doing your regular practice routine. You are playing against people in different color shirts, like we like, we like to say. You're not, we're not hitting each other anymore. We get to hit other guys. But like, you really want to run all your stuff. You want to play all your guys. Um, treat it, you know, it is a scrimmage. I mean, but you want to treat it, um, you know, kind of as such. And I wouldn't worry too much about winning and losing. Um, too. I mean, you want to win because you want to get that, you know, that mentality in your players' heads that they can get a lead, keep a lead, and finish games uh, going into your regular season. But, you know, you, you kind of, I don't want to say you don't take it as serious, but you want to make sure you're, you're going to do everything in your playbook at some point, which you normally wouldn't do. In a, in a regular conference game or, or a non-league game. So Queensboro comes back with four points to tie it, and then the alumni go down the other end and take a 6-4 lead, and there's a turnover. Edwards to Hunt, and it's broken up. Out of bounds, alumni ball. And it's nice uh, uh, to see uh, these young players here at Queensboro. We haven't seen these guys perform yet, and just to see what kind of game they could play, too. If you guys, Trotman was here, and uh, Rodney Monroe was here, number 40. He's on the bench now. But other than those two guys, it's uh, all new faces. And it's a long bench, man. You yeah. hope to keep all the guys eligible. As Mike Herwell knows, a lot of years you begin with the long bench and then by uh, the second semester it's a short bench. And that layup is no good. Joshua Williams had to go look at it, hunt the other way. Probably should have gone for the shot, try to give it to Edwards. Now Mingo's not playing against his current team, he's on his current team. 
and he uh, instructing them what kind of passes to make against these veteran players. I don't think that's what Michael Edwards wanted to do. We'll get right to one of the Tigers. Alumni lead 6-4, a little over two minutes in. And that shot is no good, a little too strong, but last touch by Edwards. And then timeout called by the alumni. But a good thing, you said Michael Edwards a few times, down here, down here, so Michael is up and down the court. That's funny, last year, remember, we did the women's alumni game, and the current team was winning by a lot. The alumni came back to win, and that turned into kind of a big game for the current team, even if they didn't realize at the time. It was a good uh, starting uh, block for them because they went on, and we didn't know what kind of year they were going to have, remember, David? And yeah. they did well until they met up with that Bronx team in the final, and their fantastic senior star won the game, basically. Bronx had their number last year. Yeah. I can't believe that was eight months ago already. Right? I feel My, like this year went very it fast. It feels like seven and three quarters, to be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> It's funny, then after the last game we did here was that women's playoff game yeah. against Duchess, which yeah. is great. That wasn't a good game, right? Oh, did they win? Yeah, they oh, won that, that, that game. Over, that was the yeah, overtime game. Yeah, they won game, that game, right. Which was great. And then... They were behind that whole yeah, game. Yeah, they were down by 15 yeah. at halftime. Is This game is tied at six. And then you missed it. Me and Mike went out to Suffolk County for the next playoff game. Queensboro Nassau on a three-pointer from Joshua Lee. The alumni lead 9-6. That's why me and Mike went out for a Region 15 playoff game. I could have been at St. John's Georgetown that day at the Garden. I said, you know, I, know. I wanted to see that game. I want to right. see Queensboro win the playoffs. And they scored 10 points in the first half. I thought, why did I go to this one? What was I thinking? And it was an hour and a half getting out there. I'm with the, Mike Kerr in the car, so it feels like two and a half hours. David, that's uh, part of the profession. and. Uh you get stuck like that sometimes. I, mean, I can remember taking trips with Army down to LaSalle and on the turnpike, and it would take two hours to get there, and then uh, Lionel Simmons just uh, blew their doors off, and we all came home depressed saying, what are we going to do now? And you'd go do the next game, you know. They rebounded a little bit that year, though. They... That's uh, always uh, part of the announcing biz uh, you're gonna have games that you just don't want to be at <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you feel the team didn't want to be at yeah. them either 10 points in the first half I mean come yeah on. that's a very low total but it was still better than the year before when they were down by 34 at halftime in the uh, region semifinals well, see, there's a, a, a bit of optimism the region uh, semifinals is not the round for the Queensboro women. Be honest year. with you, though, the CUNY Conference wasn't as good last year either. They, they, you didn't have as many top teams like the year before. Remember, BMCC was really tops up there with those big girls they had. But there was just basically this time Queensboro and Bronx uh, last year, from what I remember anyway. And you had, uh, you had the Long Island School was in there for a while too. Jarek Bowen. Oh, no, the other Queen School. Well, yeah. Check that. Long I'm Island sorry. City. Yeah. So, yeah. You were kind of right. LaGuardia. Yeah. Not really right, but, you know, 12 6 alumni. In the area. <laughs> Queens, Long Island. <laughs> it's all New York. 12 6, and the foul is called on Dabney Hunt. Well, you know, Jeff Boone was leaving the arena, but he's still around. Maybe Jeff is having second thoughts about wanting to go and suit up and get out there again. I think he heard you talking about him. Good thing he didn't hear all the bad stuff in between games you said about him. Oh, absolutely. I think I called him big. <laughs> <laughs> Little over three minutes in, alumni leading 12-6. By the way, Jeff's sporting the beard now. Another thing he didn't have in his playing days. Nice Whoop. pass inside and then uh, a trio of alumni in there to send away the shot. We're going to keep an eye on these young guys for the Tigers and see what, you know, what they show in this game anyway. Nice ball movement from the alumni. Taking this game a little more seriously, I think. A tipped and a nice play by Jonathan Paul. A 
Coach, I would say you have to take this game more seriously because while these fellas might be a little inexperienced, they can jump out there and get you shot right away where the other guys had a little more time. To well, sure, to it's, do it's, it. it's a little bit of experience versus, you know, the benefits of youth uh, in, in a way. Um, you, know, you know, again, you know, as a coach, and what Coach Mango is probably looking at is, is making sure that his team is playing hard and executing well. So far, you know, from what I've seen, they, they seem to be a pretty small team. And this is, you know, a great opportunity for us to get our first look at them. They seem a little small, but, you know, you kinda, I'm kind of watching what they're doing. They had a nice high-low pass against this 2-3 zone that the alumni were running and a good bounce pass from the high to the low post, which is important to, to be able to do. Um, um, other than that, you know, you kind of watch for your execution, make sure they're executing, they're screening and cutting well, and just staying together, being positive and playing hard um, throughout the game. Here the current Tigers, and it goes off the foot of Trotman, and you know number one, Jonathan Paul, who has the dark shorts. Yeah, actually, I didn't realize uh, who it was until you said his name. Um, he actually is an alumni of Voyages Prep High School, which is a transfer school in Queens, at which I am a teacher. So we had him early on when we first started the school, and he has resurfaced here at, uh, at Queensboro. So, so good for him being you know, getting himself into college and, 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 and making the right path for himself. Well, they got it inside to Amari Taylor that time, and Trapman tried to come over, but he was a little late, and he just powered it up, did Taylor. Taylor trying to finish the conventional three-point play, and does. It's 15-6 alumni. Very conventionally done. They didn't put the extra point up there, did they? Yet? Yet. Should be 15-6. And that pass is taken away. Keo trying to go all the way, and he is fouled. Yeah, he never lost the player trailing him, but he did enough to uh, have him jar the body on the layup. And the alumni lead by 10. Now we'll get our first look at number 20 for Queensboro. Stephen Bruton. He has a little size. 17-6 alumni. Five, uh, 17 points in five minutes. There's a three-pointer, and right away he makes an impact. Now I was watching him in the pre-games, and he has some talent, this young man. And timeout called by the alumni. Uh, David, he was going towards the basket, jamming them elegantly. I mean, this guy has ups. He can play, and uh, we get a look at him now. Actually, not a timeout. I don't know what that was. But we'll inbound again. 17-9 alumni, a little over five minutes in. Taylor. Here's Keo. Going inside, tough shot, he was fouled. You know, so now you like the 30-second uh, the shot clock in the college game. Coach Kerr, number 20, can get off the ground. Did you see how quickly he elevated there? Yeah, an athletic kid. He's got a, you know, once he gets his body a little stronger and gets his skill, skill work together, he could be a, a dangerous kid here for Queensboro. Another free throw for Keough, it's 18-9. As Trinidad goes in for the current Tigers, 19-9, alumni. <clears throat> Five and a half minutes in. It's Tiger Day here at Queensboro. <laughs> everybody's, Tiger a, Day. everybody's a Tiger. Oh. That's taken away, Taylor. Taylor going all the way and lays it in and it's 21-9. Smart play by the kid. He saw he didn't have the angle on him. He was going to get the basket. Why foul him? Smart play. Well, that tipped around. Wow. Queensboro comes away with it. And attacking Michael Bravo. Great effort. Strong play by McDonald. Great effort by McDonald. First one is no good. You 
Rosa goes in for Queensboro. And Voyagers alumni Jonathan Paul to the bench. With Mike Kerr here, he's now, he will now be Voyagers alum Jonathan Paul. Offensive rebound, another three for Bruton, and it's good. He does everything points. so smoothly. That's what I was impressed with. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you, well, you spoke about his size, and then he's hitting all these three-pointers. Doing it from the outside. Nine-point lead for the alumni. Taylor to Taylor. Inside, and Leo is fouled. Yeah, this way, as a young player, you learn how to get position to guard someone like Asonia. He has all that experience from all those years of playing that post here at Queensboro. See, he spins in there real quick. Hey, Leo looks small next to the, uh, the Taylors. <laughs> nice bounce pass, and then a not as nice bounce pass. Where's that going? Here's Amari Taylor. Nice move, nice pass. Bowling finishes, it's 23-12. And now I don't think, uh, I don't think Steven's gonna get those looks on the outside after he hit two threes. And a foul is called. In the pregame anyway, they were running number 20 off a bunch of picks. They get him free. They like to get him the ball down in that box area, and he's shown us he could shoot the outside shot. So I'm very impressed with what I've seen with him from the younger team and the older team, schooling them a little bit right now. Nice move inside. The basket is good. Nice move. Rosa makes it 23-14, seven minutes in. He's a strong guard. They go inside, Leo, spin move, and puts it in off glass. Very nice move by Leo, 25-14 alumni. Yeah, Leo likes that matchup. Keep pounding it inside, right? Big size advantage. That was his game. Looking for some movement away from the ball. And timeout called by Queensboro. 12.25 to go in the first half. The alumni lead 25-14, and I'm wondering what Coach Kerr's first impressions of the current Tigers are. Well, I mean, both both um, you and Joe mentioned uh, Bruton, number 20. He's, he, he looks like he could be a nice player for them. He's got good length, good size. May, you know, looks good on his jump shot. He made a three. You and know, they, Mike, Mike, like you said, I'm sorry to cut yeah. you off, but you, you said he needs to fill out a little bit. But when he sure. does, I could see him being a dominant player in this conference. For I, sure, for sure. I mean, they, yeah. they're using him. To, they're running him across the baseline behind the 2-3 zone, trying to get him open in the corner on a ball reversal. The other guy that, that I thought did a couple nice things is McDonald, number 32. He's the a, he's a player who made that nice bounce pass on the high-low pass um, earlier in the game against his own. And he's really putting forth a lot of effort on the offensive glass and really, you know, using his strength a little bit to try to power it up. And, you know, he's trying to be active and he's trying to make plays. Um, you know, we'll see. Right now, you know, we're trying to see who else may start stepping up for them. And, you know, again, it's just an early look and we really don't know everybody yet, but we'll see uh, what else develops. How about Bruton with eight points now? Eight of the 16 for the Tigers. Nicely done. He went to the left hand. Bowling shot rims out. Edwards chases it down for the alumni. Tip to Anwar Bowling, and he's going to be called for traveling. Yeah, what happened, Dave, is while Bowling was catching that ball, it actually got deflected, and while Bowling was catching it, his feet were already moving, and he never stopped when he got the ball. He kind of ran into that walking. Sometimes uh, your, your hustle doesn't pay. But the hustle pays there, and then Edwards. As it blocked by Bruton, he's everywhere. He's a smart kid, too. I mean, he tried to avoid the ball right there. He made a play before where he didn't cut off the guy and foul him. Down here, he went to the left hand. He seems to have great control to his game. Edwards inbounding. Nice pass, and the basket is good. 27-16. Eleven point lead. Sean Nixon, number zero with the they, ball. He looks like Boatang. We were talking about Boatangs before, and this kid number zero looks like one of the Boatangs. 
And you, Mike, talked about off air about the brother, one of the cousins going to play football. Those were the Boatengs. I come up with the name, yeah. And then Nixon goes to the bench. We hardly knew you. Here's Quick, a turnover. Quickly. Alumni with numbers the other way at three on two. Leo puts it in. Nice move by Leo. He's having a good day. 29-16 alumni. Their biggest lead up to 13. Yeah. Uh, Sonia happened to be playing basketball again today. There's a foul. And with, in every respect, that was a foul. <laughs> Wasn't a cheap one. Not at all. And this, this fella here, he's uh, pretty strong uh, on his legs down there in the blocks. McDonald will go to the line. I like McDonald. I, I like when he plants himself. He's hard to move. There's some good young players on this team. First free throw is good. 29-17 alumni. The Tigers trying to make it back to the playoffs for the first time since Bulford was here. Had a few tough seasons. For a moment, uh, Leo had the white shorts on there. I said, boy, if they had a Leo Sonia at center, <laughs> they'd be in business. 29-18, you realize they've missed the playoffs the last two years since Mike Kerr left coaching BMCC. They missed beating up on him. Now they can't make the playoffs anymore. If I keep joking like that, I'm going to have to take a train and a bus after this game instead of the ride. McDonald couldn't yeah, finish, just, but it's tipped you know, in. You know what you do? Just tell him, you know I'm only kidding, right, Mikey? 29-20, and I think Bruton oh, got that one. He probably hates being called Mikey, too. I, I know you're only kidding, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> nice pass inside. The defense fell asleep, and Leo makes him pay. 31-20. May, yeah, he made him pay is right. That was, like a, that was like a lay city right there. Corner three. Is no good, Bruton got a hand on it, couldn't put it in. Now another fast break chance for the alumni, Edwards. A little fancy dribbling, Leo spins, had his shot blocked by Bruton. Alumni Boy, that, ball. That, that play had about 10 lives right there. <laughs> when is it gonna go out? Looked like Leo had a basket for sure and then <laughs> Bruton came in and blocked it. Not that we're trying to make it the, uh, the Bruton show. Leo's going to go out for a while now. He's really uh, uh, exhausted himself a little. And traveling is called on Eric Light. He was here uh, only a couple of years ago, right, Eric? Well, he uh, was here the Holford year. Didn't play two years ago, and then he came back and played last year for Carl. Yeah. Here's Bruton. Thought about another three. Long pass. Peralta had to go up for that one. McDonald's shot is no good and rebounded by Amari Taylor. Under 10 minutes to play in the first. Light inside shot is no good. Tipped and hauled in by McDonald. Joshua Williams attacking and counted and the foul. Putting it in off glass. Yeah, give him an A for effort and he got the foul. 31-22 alumni. The young guys have to get their wits about them. They hit the boards hard because they're going to out-rebound this team, and then they have to get going as the younger guy, as the older guys did in the first game. The red team, they went on to run, and that's what these young guys have to do a little. Yeah, I think we also have to remember that really they've only been practicing for since October 1st for right. like two weeks. Right. So they probably don't even have so much in. They haven't drilled the things they have in as much as they're, they're, they want to, and certainly they will have in by the time the first real game starts. So it's going to be a little sloppy. So again, like as a coach in a game like this, like so, so early, with only a few, really a handful of practices under your belt, um, you just want to see that the kids are playing hard and they're staying positive, and they're going to make mistakes. You just have to, you know, you have to deal with them and, and live with them. Um, you just don't want them, you know, getting so sloppy and playing selfishly or anything like that. You got to use your substitutions, you know, I would say, pretty freely. Because um, again, these guys, you know, they're still still getting in great shape, and they're still trying to, you know, remember now with the lights on, so to speak, remember all the things that they need to remember 
um, as far as the things that are ran offensively and defensively. That is about the size of it right there. Everything you said, I mean, right on the mark. Because uh, nothing like being out there and doing it over a period of time. You could diagram this, diagram that, but if you, you're not practicing and you, you got to really start running things in the live game situation. Joshua Williams at the line, one and one. Misses the first, almost got his own rebound. Picked it up, but it, it will be a alumni ball. 31-22 alumni, 9.08 to go in the first. That's why if you're the Queensboro current team, you can't lose in this game. You're out here, you're having a good time. You're playing against guys who've played here before. You look up to them, actually, and it's a great game to be in. Bravo with the tough shot. That, was, that wasn't an easy angle, even though he was close. It's 33-22 alumni. 11-point lead. The alumni have led by as many as 13 in the first half. And there's an offensive foul. Away from the ball. Well, yeah, it was, a, it was an illegal screen. And, and again, that, that speaks again to the, the execution that has to get shored up for these new, the new Tigers. Um, the ball handler or a cutter, if he doesn't have the ball, you really have to wait, take your man away from the screen before you start coming off. Let the screener get there. You know, what I always say is nine times out of ten when a, when a screen doesn't work, it's not the screener's fault, it's the cutter's fault or the dribbler's fault if you're screening for the ball. So we just got a little antsy with the ball, started dribbling before the screener got there, and it causes a foul on, on the screener uh, being late. So he's moving, obviously, when contact is made. And Bravo put in another basket, so the lead is back up to 13. And we yeah. have a foul at this end, so there will be free throws. Bravo old schooled him on that. Just backed him down and just went right around him. It's an easy move, but you have to know how to get in position. He's, he uses his big body on that. Peralta short on the first. <clears throat> well, Joe, yeah, you mentioned about Bravo using his body. I mean, th these alumni guys are using what, what their advantage is, and that's a little bit of, you know, as they say, grown man strength. Up I mean, here. they're a lot, a lot bigger <laughs> and stronger than these young kids. So they're using that to their advantage. And, and plus, they're smarts, coach. They, uh, they've been, well. you know, been around. About that play by Amari Taylor, the steal and the layup and a 15-point lead. Now they got him a little unsettled. Let's see how they respond here. I think the current team may be a little surprised being hit with the haymaker in the first 12 minutes. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah I think they'd be a little surprised, especially since they just got a full-game <laughs> scout on these guys a minute ago. What an effort by Bravo there. And they're going to get the ball. I think a lot of pride from the alumni. They really want to win this game. Let me tell you, Bravo looks pretty tough, too. He don't look like the kind of guy you want to mess with, you know? Now let's uh, watch uh, free throws coming up also. Can extend the lead. Hey, you speak about how tough Bravo looks. I agree. His name may be Bravo, but he looks a lot tougher than Barry Williams. <laughs> Thanks for that, Mike. 38-22. 7.45 to go. Weed is up to 17 now. If you're a coach, you almost want to see your team blown out, and then you can say, hey, you see how tough it is to, uh, to play? Well, I don't think you want that, but if you do get blown out, that's exactly the tactic you take. Adjusting on the fly. <laughs> you make it seem like you had it all the way. Let's see if these young guys can hold it together. And I think they'll be back in the game, but they got to get their collective minds on the same page now, and they commit another turnover here. A five-second violation. And now the uh, alumni are trying to rattle them a little bit, clapping on the bench. Sure, trying Mango to... was clapping. It's like the coaches are trying to out-clap each other. Here's Bravo inside, muscling his way inside. It's 41-22. Bravo. Remember the last few years, the Tigers had some problems with size. We team them against other teams, and you go, wow, this, this is quite a disadvantage. Bravo looks like a guy who's played a few games in the park. Bruton, another three. 
No good. And Jarek Bow running. Bow tried to give it up to Keo, but it's behind him. And here come the Tigers the other way. Trotman pull up jumper is no good. And rebounded by Taylor. Gives it to Dabney Hunt. Hunt, jumper, banks it in. And it's 43-22. Yeah, I was going to say, when will Emengo call a timeout? Because Carl needs to uh, just settle these kids down. I mean, I know it's not a real game, but you still want to uh, yeah, maybe say a few things to them right now. Hey, this is a 12 nothing run for the alumni. Just point out a few things. You're not going to yell. You're not going to get upset. But uh, right, Mike? Mike never yelled in the huddle. <laughs> oh, never. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you, like you say, the alumni's on a 12 nothing run. I, I don't care if it's, you know, a scrimmage, alumni day, practice, or the national championship. I mean, you, you have to get your team settled down, and you have to start making a better commitment on offense, on defense, I should say. And it's a um, good chance to instruct right now. Exactly. I mean, yeah. This is exactly it, because, you know what, you got, during the season, teams are going to go on runs against you. It's going to happen. And you just have to, you know, rein the guys in, refocus them a little bit, maybe motivate them a little bit. And, and, and hopefully they react in a positive way. And if they don't, you go down the bench and find someone else who will. And then when it gets to the regular season, you motivate them a little bit. You talk, throw a chalkboard a little bit. You know, do whatever, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, chairs, chalkboards, yeah. whatever's right. available whatever, and not bolted down. Whatever's available. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 43-22, 6.35. I guess the good news for Queensboro is the alumni can't keep scoring like this, right? I mean, if they do, they'll finish the game with like 120 maybe, points. And maybe the same team running the clock as the first game, so maybe the score will get evened up yeah. at some point. You never know. 6.25 to go in the first. Very tough defense by the alumni. And Henry Birch is now in for the alumni. I'm not going to blame those kids over there. That was probably like mechanical failure. That's what happened. Sure it was, Joe. Yes. Alumni back the other way, it's Dabney Hunt, it's 45-22. You know, you keep waiting for Queensboro to end the run and it just gets worse and worse. They have 22 points and they're losing by 23. Why do I feel like that was not Carlo Mango's plan coming into this game? Nuns pass inside, double team, and he stepped on the baseline. Alumni ball. Let me talk to the kids again. You're doing a magnificent job, kids. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm behind you. Sir Malik Turner walking in with the book bag and gave the ball to the ref. Meanwhile, it's another uh, bad play, and uh, the plays are now mounting uh, on the white side, so uh, the tide is becoming a little harder to turn back. Henry Birch, who could hit a three-pointer. Got to look out for that. Here's Birch from the free throw line. He gets in on the scoring. It's 47-22. 16 nothing run. Remember when Birch came into the program, Dave? We were looking at him. We said, I like this kid. He's fast. He runs even during the warm-ups. And uh, I was talking to Pete before this game. I said, there's Birch. Yeah, he said, and he was telling us about his sister who plays with the women now and said she's a remarkable student also, his sister, Birch. And he said, yeah, Birch is still fast. Uh, and then he made a joke because he got here late or something. He said, but not today. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that ends a 16-0 run. Hey, Bruton has nine points. Almost a, a half of them. <laughs> That's no good. 47-23, 5-20 to go in the first. This has been a quick-moving first half. And there's a blocking foul. I think Queensboro can make a game out of this. This goes like the old uh, coach saying, you can't win a game in the first half, but you can lose one. Queensboro might be uh, playing themselves out of uh, the comeback in the second half with this. That was Birch again. I guess the good news is they still have 25 minutes. I think that's good news. That may not be good news. I don't know. Might go 25 more minutes of this? Birch hits the first one. 48-23. That's quite a lopsided score right now. I didn't even, I didn't even take it into account, the score itself. <laughs> 49-23. 
Joe Turner is here too. Yeah. He's now in. It was pretty good the last few years. It's a jumper. That's the first Queensboro field goal, and I don't know how long. A, l a long time. That's the answer. 49-25. They got him a good Mitty. shot. Good shot there. Vladimir Midi with the mid-range jumper. jumper. Yeah. Midi with the Midi. And I don't think the shot clock started. A lot to come back from, David. Can they do it? Well, not if they play defense like that. Mr. Birch says, I bet not. Lead back up to 26. And that's a turnover, Birch. Wow. To Hunt. And there's a layup, and the lead is 28. I always I always call Birch Mr. Hustle. I mean, he just he runs all over the place. Doesn't matter if it's the alumni game, apparently. <laughs> and there's another turnover. Keo. Oh, oh boy. Nice pass to Hunt. Oh boy. 4-10 to go. Hunt got the hand and is called for a foul. I thought that was all ball. Doesn't matter what I think, though, does it? Yes, it does. <laughs> You can voice your opinion. I say from up here, 55 feet away, that I, I think I had the better call than the ref. Okay. We'll buy that. Now. Even with uh, my glasses at the top of the You bleachers. know, Dave, uh, there's a certain point in even this game now where these young guys have to say, hey, we're in here for real now. We got to start, uh, you know, now we got to go to battle. <laughs> we're not kidding around no more. And they could have thought that a few minutes ago. When but it looked alone. like right on that play there that they're making up their minds that, you know, we got nothing to lose now. We got to go hard. 53-27. Another thing, uh, Joe, that the, uh, the current Tiger team has to take into account is that these alumni guys aren't going to take their foot off the gas because they don't get to come to practice tomorrow. This is it for them. So they're not concerned with embarrassing anyone. No, if, if, no, no. If the Tigers are going to let them score, they're going to the alumni are going to keep scoring. So they need to step it up. You know what, Mike? These these alumni guys are doing the team a service, playing yep. them like this. Yep. You know, they're teaching them how to play yeah, and, and they're uh, making they're, Queensboro a better team. Yeah, and they're doing a very, very good job. And if nothing else, the current Queensboro <laughs> players could say, "Hey, you know, these guys came in like me when they were new here," and then. You know, look at how you know how I much they've go, developed. I, I have to go to David for this. I don't know if they still do it, but does St. John's play marathon oil anymore on the preseason? But they used I don't to. No, they actually them. had their tip-off event yesterday. They used to play them every year, and they'd get a bunch of pros in the, in St. John's Carnesec Arena, and they'd school St. John's. They gave them tough games. Few nice shots from Mitty, 55-29. As Joe said, Mitty with the mid-range shot. Uh, this Marathon Oil had guys who played in the NBA, former guys, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, I remember those Marathon Oil teams. They used to travel around and, and play in the preseason against a lot of top colleges, and they were professional players. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah. know. You know, the NCAA keeps changing rules on that stuff. And I'm not even sure if. If teams like that still uh, still exist and play in, the, in those type of games, unless they're like All right, pure so exhibition games. Whether or not they do, it's right. beyond the point. But the right. point is that you play in a game like that, then you have to play Providence a week yeah. later. Uh, yeah. Maybe you learn something. Oh, yeah. You, know? well, and you play against professional players. It's real. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's yeah. a big step up from, from even, the, even the highest level of college. That was the first game I ever did there, and everything, the whole atmosphere was like serious. It wasn't a fool around game, you know? Yeah. Yeah, those yeah. are... Those are you know, again, those guys are, have just so much more experience at such a higher level for however many years they've been professionals. Um, you know, you can learn a lot from them. Three minutes to go in the first half. A legal screen, I think. Yeah, the, the, that's, a, that's one of those new calls they put in college a couple years ago, and then the ref is showing the player how he did it. The screen itself was legal, but as he rolled, you're not allowed to block to block the other player off with your body. Um, it's like that impediment rule. You're impeding his progress. That's a You're good, not that's to do a that good rule, by the way. That right, and then, like what it used to happen is the NBA team used to do it on purpose, and you'd get a guy like Shaquille O'Neal, and his job was to take this guy out, and he would roll and well, back him out of the play. Out. Right, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But he'd purposely roll out of the play, and it, would, it was impossible to defend if you continued to allow it, and that's why they changed the rule. Is it tough for a coach to adjust to rules when there's something in for so long and then they change it? 
Yeah, it is tough, and, it, and a lot of times it's tough on the players, too, who are used to growing up and playing a certain way and being allowed to do certain things. And certainly for a, for a coach, you know, the big ones are like, you know, you're not allowed to, to, to block cutters anymore. You're not allowed to bump cutters as much as we used to. Um, you know, a big part of basketball, at least for me defensively, is you, you, don't, you don't allow flash cuts. Um, and now it's almost like you have to kind of let them get past you and you can just ride with them. You used to be able to just block them off. So something as simple as that makes a big difference in, in the style of defense, for example, that you want to put in. Um, it really changes what you have to do. But like everything else, you know, you adapt or die. You know, you have to play by the rules or you're, you're going to have to well, do something else. Let's stay with Coach for just a few more seconds. Mike, is it tough when you're down by 20 points? Well, it's a lot easier to be up 20, <laughs> but, but, but we can't always be up 20. So, yeah, there's going to be situations like this where, you know, you're going to have a tough day. Things aren't going to go your way. And, again, we have to reiterate that this is a very young team, yeah. almost all new players, probably a lot of freshmen, and they've only been practicing together for two weeks. Yeah. So you, you can't expect that they're going to be so good now. Now, if, they're, if this is the result we see and the style we see four months from now, we have a problem. But I'm sure that's not going to be the case. Um, so you have to, you know, take that into account. Now, being down 20, all right, hey, it's it, a, it, it, use it, it as a like, learning it process. It sounds like a dumb question, but the no, point is, how do you resp- how do you stay on the bench when that's going on? As you told us a few times today, I think, there's a number of ways you handle that. It all depends. It all depends when it is, how it is. Whatever. Right, and, and the situation of how you're down 20 points, let's say. And you got to know your, your players. you got to know how they react to things. You can get on them. You can, you can pat them on the back. You know, you can make changes. Uh, you know, you just have to refocus them in, in whatever way is productive. The alumni come down, miss a shot. I give a lot of credit to the alumni also because we say the current Tigers haven't really practiced together, played together. These alumni don't practice together at all, and they're, they may put up 60 points in the first half. Bo, I think, touched it last. That's a good point, David. Nice bounce pass, and the basket is good. Hey, a little 6 nothing run for the Tigers. They're playing a little better. You don't really notice when it's still a 22-point game, but... But they're hustling. It's better than 28. They're trying to cut off the outlets now, and they're not letting them get up court. Like Mike said before, you couldn't have made that shot any easier for Birch. And that's, that plays a role in it. Under two minutes to play in the first half. Amari Taylor, nice play to the hoop. C opened up on that one. Yeah, 57-33. 100 seconds to go in the first half. Number one guarding number one. When you say 100 seconds, you sound so studious when you do that. (laughs) Got a hand on it. 10 on the shot clock. Going inside, tough shot, no good, knocked away. Alumni ball. And now a four on two. Bo. Here's a jumper, it's good. See, they're playing an experienced team. You know, they, they didn't go for the first shot they could get there. They just worked it out. And they saw you had time, and they got a good shot. Final minute of the first half. It's 59-33. Here's Joshua Lee. Nice pass to Amari Taylor. Too easy. 61-33. The lead is back up to 28. 45 How do you like seconds that? to go. And I shouldn't have said an experienced team, but a team of experience. Let's put it that way, because they don't play together like you said. There's a lot of experience on that court. And a turnover. So alumni ball with 44 seconds to go. Lee, spin move. Tough shot inside was blocked by some taller Tigers. Oh. And the pass was too fancy. Maybe that's not the time for it there, young no, man. No, I don't, I don't think being down by 28 is the time. May have thought that was the only way to, uh, to get it to him. You'll live, you'll learn. Now, this is a less experienced team than we've seen out here with the Queensboro men for a while uh, playing a team like this. Let's let's factor that in. The alumni could hold for the final shot, or just about hold. I forgot there were 33 seconds. I forgot it's a 30 second clock now. They're taking a pretty good whooping. (laughs) 
last touch by Bruton. 12 and a half seconds to go. The alumni can take a 30 point lead with the basket here. Johnny Bravo over there on the bench. Uh, not uh, Johnny Bravo, but Bravo over there on the bench. Uh, really a key to what started happening here. Bo almost tipped it in. If I, let's see if there's a buzzer beater. And takes a shot after. Almost put it in. Not that it would have counted. So, that half wasn't so good, was it, Mike? No, not, not so good. Uh, you know, obviously, re results-wise, you want to you wanna be better. You know, for our first look at this Queensboro team, obviously they're very young. <clears throat> they're a little undersized, but they do have some bright spots. Uh, a couple guys um, that, have, that, have, that have stepped up and, and made some shots. Middy's made a couple of jump shots. Um, uh, uh, McDonald, I thought, did a lot, of, a lot of, actually a lot of very nice things. And he's one of the guys that is, is certainly not backing down and not, um, not taking this game lightly. And Bruton, of course, is showing a lot of ability as well. Um, you know, they, they, they're struggling. They're not playing well at all. Again, we have to reiter reiterate that they haven't been together long. But you never know. I mean, I think, you know, but, you know, I think there's definitely uh, probably a bit of some untapped potential on this team that we can look for throughout the season. But, but we'll see as time goes on. But they didn't even play Monroe in the first half, right, David? Uh, Monroe didn't even touch the court, I don't I think. If he played, it was for a very short time. He's going to play a little bit for them this year, I would think. I would think so, yeah. one of the returners. So we'll be back for the second half. At halftime, the alumni 61, the Tigers 33. Well, there was some good news in the first half for Queensboro. It's over. That's ah. the end of the good news. The bad news <laughs> is they were outscored by 28 points. 61-33. Well, yeah, David, not, not a great first half. And I was just speaking with Joe um, at halftime about, you know, what Coach Amengo should be doing. And, I mean, it's my opinion that you don't worry about winning or losing this game. But you gotta, you gotta, you know, hang your hat on something. So I mean, if it was me, I mean, just as a coach, and I'm saying, I'm not saying that he emphasizes the same things I do. But I was a big half court defense guy. I would just put in these guys' heads at halftime. Hey, they have 61 points. Let's not let them get 100, which means hold them to 38 or less. And that's a lot less than the 61 they just gave gave up. So if they can hold them to say 30, 30, or 35 points this half, at least at the end of the game, you have something positive to give to your young, young team. Um, to build on. Um, you have to do your best to pull positives out of this game, um, you know, particularly if it continues to go this poorly as it did in the first half. So that's one thing that I would, that I would try to focus on if I was uh, in this situation. And, and we've all been here, believe me. Here's a three-pointer. No good. Trotman with the offensive rebounds, and they'll dribble out. Pass inside. Loses it off his foot. Very tipped. Here's Dabney Hunt. Henry Birch. Long two. No good. And, and when I say, you know, try to hold them a certain number of points, you can't just say hold them to those points. You've got to give them some strategies as well to do that. And I feel from watching the first half, they got crushed on the interior by these bigger, stronger, older alumni players. So my thing would be let's front the post. Don't let them catch it in there. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and make them have to beat us on the perimeter a little bit. <laughs> One minute into the second half. That would be nice if they scored a few points. There's traveling called. Can't have everything. <laughs> and uh, they're taking a time out right away here on the alumni side. Uh, Coach Pichardo does not like what he's seeing in a certain regard up by 28 and he wants to get to 30. Maybe he just wants to give him a chance to rest too, you know, running, up, running up and down, running up and down. Yeah, give them all the time they need though. <laughs> you don't want guys pulling muscles today. And They're like 25, come on. Yeah, but you still, you know, you know, David, if you're not used to playing all the time, you know, things become, yeah, at this time of year, you got to take care of you. <laughs> you don't want to run too much, you don't want to Here's Henry Birch, alumni are trying to go up by 30. 
Dabney Hunt to Birch. Nice Ooh. pass inside. Leo couldn't finish. Still a 28 point game. Trotman behind the back pass to nobody. There's a long pass. To somebody by yeah. deflection. So, uh, that was a very ugly 90 seconds of basketball. Yeah, a little rag the tag, yeah. There's a good Trotman play. And a foul is called. It was a good pass, uh, getting Trotman down on the baseline where they could not stop him. So this hopefully will be the first point registered in the second half. Trotman at the line. First one is good. Trotman splits the free throws. 61-34. Birch to Bow. White. Hunt back to White. Bow. <laughs> nice pass to Leo. Leo puts it in off glass. <laughs> I tell you, coach is really coaching over there. <laughs> yeah. Is he, this is the final four. Look at this. This is like an uh, officer and a gentleman stuff. Could always count on you for a good movie reference. There's a pass. Would have been a good pass if Light was on the same team. Oh. And then Leo commits a foul. Ugly, ugly basketball. Well, this may sound a little nitpicky, but I'm going to say something positive on the last possession. I mean, in the first half, the alumni were basically just going right to the basket un unfettered. But that last, that last basket, although it, was, it ended up looking like an open layup, that's a tough rotation to make. They're in the 2-3 zone. First, they got beat in the middle on penetration, right down the middle between the two front guards, which you should never allow. Uh, then the middle, the middle defender in the back line stepped up to stop the ball, which he has to do. The problem is that next rotation, those, those forwards in the 2-3 in the zone have to slide over and take away the man that he vacated in the low block, and they, and they, they didn't do that. Again, two weeks of practice. That may not quite be no. too solid yet, so I don't, I don't go crazy over that possession, although it looks like an open layup. It's, a, it's a more of a difficult rotation that should be shored up as we move forward. Now, David, can you imagine now when Mike was coaching his daughter saying, okay, Daddy, will you pass the mashed potatoes now? <laughs> <laughs> but he's she right. She needs to know seven different ways to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Leo to White. Tougher defense being played here by Queensboro in the second half. And down to five on the shot clock. Leo inside. Well, hook shot is no good. Trotman, nice bounce pass. Williams oh. can't finish. No. So we talked about the defensive improvements. I'll also have to put the ball in the basket at the other end. And Joseph Turner gives the alumni a 30-point lead. Yeah, what would kill me on that play was, okay, so they, they got themselves a fast break opportunity. They missed the layup. Okay, it's, that's going to happen. You don't, you don't go crazy over that. But the fact that they didn't get back and stop the alumni in transition. They got a very easy, quick shot right on the first pass in a, in a primary situation. That you, you, that you is what you get upset about. There's a basket at 66-38. Is it easier for you to see the game from up here where you could overlook everything than on the court? I don't know, it's starting to get more difficult as we see these breakdowns. <laughs> <laughs> Bow for three, that's no good. Leo the offensive rebound. Counted on the foul. Big rebound by Asonia there, but uh, Dave, uh, go. I'm going back a couple of years. Uh, was Turner instrumental in that big win for uh, for over uh, over Hostos? Hostos? Uh, yeah, I think he was in that one for Holford. So we're not that far out of their uh, their big time in the sun. No, the Tur Broke. Turner and Light are the recent alum. Alumni, Leo, can't finish the three-point play. Joshua Lee with the rebound. Leo inside, no basket, a foul was called on the floor. Boy, they really had that, everybody uh, excited there at BMCC that night. Uh, that place was packed and what a ball game that was. That's right. Also, what do you do as a coach when you have such a smaller team? How do you try to take away the size advantage 
And here's Hunt for three. No good. Well, when you're undersized, I mean, it's going to happen sometimes. Um, you just have to, like what I do, what I would do, I always teach that you, you want to front the post to keep them from catching it inside. Have your, help, have your weak side defenders, you know, sloughing off their man in, in weak side help to stop the lob pass. But most importantly, you got to get up and pressure the ball. The person who's holding the ball, dribbling the ball, um, you got to make it hard for them to make that easy look inside. So you're fronting the post to deter the pass. You're pressuring the ball to keep him from having good vision and having a good passing angle. And you have help on the weak side. In case he does throw it, um, it, it sh should never get completed. And if it does get completed, at least you've got two defenders on, on the man who caught the ball inside. And, and you know, eventually they're going to get a little frustrated, you would hope and start, you know, stop putting it inside where they would have an advantage. So there's always ways uh, to do it. But a lot of other teams do. Sometimes they'll just stretch out their defense, run and jump the ball, and just try to make them make mistakes with it and throw it away. By the way, now it's funny, Bruton had a good first half for Queensboro. Now he can't even have a seat on the bench. It's so crowded down there. He's standing know, behind like the bench. Hey, uh, hh, Coach, uh, does Coach Amengo talk to the... Uh, the alumni guy and say try to run some of these plays so my guys can get used to them and yeah, actually it's a good point I, he I don't know that he's doing it today but he, I would definitely do that if I was coach I used to do that in my regular games you know if I was coaching against uh, I, just one quick story uh, you mentioned uh, Dr. Jody King who is the former coach at Hostos he had he had some very good teams uh, when I was at BMCC and I had one team that wasn't very good and it was late in the game and they were up big on us and it was over and I actually told him I, I had recently put in a new zone offense. It was kind of a little bit of a trick play. And I yelled down the bench to him. I go, hey, Jody, go into 2 3 zone. I want to see, I want to try something. And, and he said, Mike, we don't do 2 3 zone. We haven't put it in yet. <laughs> so I said, I don't care. Put it in. So, we, so, you know, being friends and whatever, like he did it. And I ran my trick play. We got an open three pointer, which we made. And then he, uh, he never. Never played two three zone again. <laughs> yeah, because uh, they're running a lot of set stuff. These alumni right now, they're running a lot of set plays. And you hit that three pointer against Hosto, so you only lost by thirty four. I'm sorry, Mike. And there's a charge called. Right. Well, I wanted to just put in that, that a little bit of a funny story, but but seriously, Joe, to answer your question, you're right. Um, yeah, he he could go to them and say, hey, you know, run this type, run, you know, run some high ball screens for a while. Let me try to guard that. You know, let me, you know, run some open offense. Let me yeah, guard that. Yeah, it's all in the family. Right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So you have, of course, and yeah. that's what they're there yeah. to help to help uh, yeah. make the team better too. And we have an injury. I believe it's Trotman. Well, I can't tell. The trainer was so close to making it through a double header without uh, having to go on the court, and then the second half of the second game, it's an injury under the basket. That's the fifth foul on one of the alumni. I wonder if anybody cares. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, it's a 28-point game, and 14:30 to go. So uh, you take it if you can cut it down uh, five points at a time. Who knows? Maybe you can get close in this game. Well, Joe, speaking to what, what I mentioned earlier about just trying to keep do a better job defensively this half and keep the alumni scoring down just to hang your hat on something, you know, the alumni scored seven points now in, in five and a half minutes this half, which is certainly a better pace than what was happening in the first half. So, you know, at least that's something that, you know, he could, that Coach Amengo could take into the huddle and say, okay, you know, we're doing a good job with that. Let's keep stringing together stops. And then, you know, as, as they get a little more confident, you work on some other things. And you end up ha you know, having yourself a positive second half. And it was Trotman who was on the floor with the injury. And now being attended to behind the Queensboro bench. There's Bruton with another basket, 68-42. Bruton, the best player on the court tonight for the Tigers. In spurts, like nothing has been consistent, of course. No. He hasn't played a ton either. He spent no. some time on the bench. And a nice jumper by Eric White. The alumni hit the 70 mark. It's 70-42. 14 minutes to play. Nice light touch. And then Light got a piece from behind. And Light is called for a foul. Yeah, good. It was good. nice defense, though. That was a good recovery by Monroe, and he fed it right back down there. 
So good uh, second effort by the Tigers, getting them to the line. So when things are not working well, you got to go to that extra effort and you know, get a couple of attempts, and they're struggling for offense. First one is good, 70-43. I don't remember an alumni game where the current team got blown out. And you've done quite a few of them. Yeah. This is number six for me, 70-44. Your pension is right around the corner, man. Looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have to worry about overtime in this one. Light, double teamed, gets it to Taylor, oh. and Taylor puts it in. Extra arc on that one. Well, it looked like they had a good double team, and then they gave up an easy layup. Well, they did have a good double team in the corner, and that's what you want, but they had a late rotation. Uh, Bruton has to get over and cut off that cutter under the basket. Don't worry about the guy in the opposite corner. The ball is never going to get there. Just a late rotation on that, and they were, they're one step away from making these stops now. There's a foul called. Some nice ball movement from the alumni. Eric Light will go to the line for two shots. Well, every time they get a little bit close, then the alumni goes on a little bit of a run and uh, right back to 28. Boy, my math is getting good. <laughs> Just when you think they're going to make it a 22 or 23 point game, it goes back up to 29. And your math's getting good uh -huh. too? Yeah. And we're back up to 30, 74, 44. Well, you need math in games like this, don't you? The scoreboard guys need math in games like in any games. <laughs> we have a foul, a phantom foul. <laughs> you don't see some of them. According to Mike Kerr, his team never committed fouls. That's why he always told the refs. I won I took a trip to Utah to they were playing the Utah Utes. The Utah Utes never committed a foul out there. Never. <laughs> I mean, a guy got absolutely ransacked on, and they would go, come on, come on. <laughs> That's getting behind your team, boy. Well, keeping it alive. They're not resting up by 28. Taylor for three. No. Oh. The biggest lead now for the he, alumni, 31. He's had that three-point shot going. By the way, that was before the late, great Rick Majerus got there to okay. Utah. They, they still had a good team yeah, there. He year. got them to the title game yeah, in Yeah, he was terrific. You know, when it's blowout time, now we start talking about who knows what games. They had a team, uh, just to add a little more light to it. They had a team the year before that took North Carolina down to the final seconds and that almost upset them in the tournament. That's how good they were. Any classic games you want to talk about, Mike? <laughs> While this is 79-46 uh, with under 12 minutes to play. Ooh. Williams, a nice play. He had to get it done on that. He, he, a second effort. That was a nice play off glass and then took it away. I think he stepped on the line, though, so the alumni will have it. Oh, there's one kid who's not giving up that Williams. He's going after it. No, I think the effort's been pretty good in the second half by the Tigers. Yeah, David, I feel, um, you know, there's definitely some, some positives with some of these players. There's definitely some effort. And another thing that you want to work on besides your execution and, and, and all that is that you want to find out, you know, what, play, what players play well together, um, what rotations you might want to start thinking about. Uh, for the for when the regular games start, so you know Coach Mango has a lot on his plate right now, and um, you know that's that's why he gets paid the big bucks to, uh, to to run things over here. Another basket by Bruton, 79-50. Dabney Hunt thought about a three. White. Good ball movement. Dabney Hunt misses the jumper. Now the Tigers running the other way. Nope. And Hunt commits a foul. Yeah, it's you're going to know you're going for a layup when Hunt comes after you, and he did a good job and got fouled on it. That was a clean foul, kind of hard, but it was clean. 
This kid has excelled a little bit here in these last few minutes. No, it's nice after the alumni, all the other CUNY teams will look easy to Queensboro. Maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> First one is no good. I guess there's, uh, David, you probably know this better than I, checking the rosters so far, but I guess a lot of teams lost good players this year, too. Seems like that every year, right, at the two-year level? There was a great player on, uh, remember, on Hostos. There was a few on BMCC, and so those guys won't be back, and uh, that's got to help. Yeah. Oh, he's a, a real great player on Bronx. Remember that kid? Mm -hmm. Three for Craig Taylor. No good. Hunt the offensive rebound. Light thought about a three. And then one pass Bruton. No good. It was funny to see Bruton, number 20, guarding Light, who used to wear number 20. And a foul called at the other end. So Manhattan was able to take it all the way last year, right? In the They're tournament? The yeah. Yeah, BMCC uh, one CUNY, yeah. and you you were saying Joe about region, right, and you were saying Joe about um, how some of the other CUNY teams may be losing some players to graduation and that um, that may help Queensboro. I mean, we should mention that CUNY was as strong last year as it's been in a while, top to bottom. I mean, Q Queensboro really had their work cut out for them in this conference last year. Absolutely. So so if the conference comes back to them a little bit and they improve on their end uh, with this with this new young team. You know, they can make some noise and be in the mix as well. You know, Coach, we were saying this off the air before. Queensboro lost some good players, too, and they weren't even a good team last year. Yeah, they had they had yeah. some talent. Yeah. I don't think they had a lot of depth, but they definitely right. had, right. you know, five or six guys that could really hold their own yeah. in the CUNY. Yeah. Um, a lot of them are gone now, but we'll see. New guys have to step in just like, just like with any team. You know, it's funny. They won one game in the CUNY last year, and BMCC finished undefeated. But you look at the last game, Queensboro only lost by two. We were right there. Yeah. If Light hit the corner the three. jumped up, mm. and we couldn't see the last one. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? I, I like being up here. <laughs> you know, when we do the QPTV game, we should be up here. We could see everything. We're not trying to peek around people. Eric Light is fouled on <laughs> a jump shot. To, we were trying to get around that guy. We just couldn't do it. They had a real chance to win that game, though. That, that Light was, missed a three at the buzzer. Yeah, I mean, can't yeah. like me. I had 28 points in the second half. He had a great game, yes. Terrific game. Mike Kerr said that one. I wanted that one from him. Mike Kerr is very greedy. Well, you know, that, that's why I said, David, I, I, I know it prompted a little chuckle, but that they weren't uh, like a real competitive team in terms of the conference uh, in wins, no. but yet they lost some pretty good players. I mean, guys who can put the ball in the hoop. Ten, ten to go. Williams shot is an air ball. And going the other way, Turner to Hunt. Williams broke it up. I don't know who went off of last. The refs look to each other. And, of course, you know, uh, not to put any undue pressure on him, but this is kind of a key year for Carl Amengo, too. Maybe not yet, but he wants to get this team in the right direction, of course. Missed the playoffs in his first two years, so I yeah. think he would like to make it in year three. Now, if he, he, he could just get them to play pretty good ball this year, I think he'll be happy. No, we're not talking about winning the title. We're not talking about, but we're talking about being competitive, having a, you know some signs of optimism here. Right. Well, uh, Joe, all you can ask for is to be competitive throughout the season and, and give yourself a chance to win. I mean, you want to be playing your best basketball not on October 17th. You want to be playing your best ball at the end of the season, going into the playoffs, and then obviously through the playoffs if you can if you can if you can get there. So, you know, so if he can this, grab himself four CUNY wins, I think he'd be pretty happy. If you can get, this yeah, year. exactly. Yeah. If you can get in there, it doesn't matter how you get them, and it doesn't matter when you get them, as long as, as long as you're playing your best towards the end. And with this young team, it's going to take a while. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, you yeah. can't expect miracles. If they were playing their, their best game of the year today, it would be a problem. So That's right. as long as they can get their, get their act together and get themselves on the same page, which I'm sure they will, and they're playing good at the end, and they, they have as good a chance as anybody. Hunt hits a shot, three-pointer. Queensborough had been on a 9-2 run before that. He's been relentless, Hunt, hasn't he? Well, hey, we're pretty close if they're going to get to 100 or not. That's the magic number. See, there's still some drama left. 
You, you hear? You said you said Queensboro was on a run. Which Queensboro? Well, yeah, the current yeah. Queensboro Tigers running on oh, okay. to run. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> It's all Queensboro today. That's right. Under nine minutes to play now. Oh, now, now, now the alumni hamming it up a little here. Hunt for three. That <laughs> one rattles out. But Leo, they really are relentless. Yeah, they really are. I think the alumni want to win by 40. Well, they these don't guys want are feeling stop. their oats now. Yeah. I think the only uh, player on the alumni team that's not worried about running up the score is Bravo, who has already changed into his street clothes on the bench. I don't think he'll be returning. That's good news for the current Queensboro squad is he's had quite a day today. They really have no way to handle him inside. Even with Bravo out, they turn the ball over. Uh, eight and a half minutes to go. Well, who knows? Maybe Bravo has a bowling date tonight or something. But. White jumper, no good. Tipped. Now, all kidding aside, he really played well, Bravo. He showed a lot of physical intensity. There's a nice play. Certainly was. Rosa. He's, he showed signs, this kid. This, he's a good guard. 84-57, eight minutes to go. Birch launches a three. No good. Move. I mean, that was a 23 points in 12 minutes. There you go. There's a nice play. Couldn't finish, but Joshua Williams is there, and he puts it in. 84-59. Yep. And I would say Williams has shown some signs, too, of being a pretty good player. Williams, the guard, and uh, the, the kid who scored the most points. Broughton. Seven and a half minutes to go. White to Birch. Birch going to the basket, throwing up a wild one, no good. Good play by the Tigers the last few minutes around a 13-5 run. And then a reach and foul is called. Very nice, David. I mean, they've actually shown something to be optimistic about. They've they played better. They, they have controlled the pace a little more. They're getting kind of their sea legs about them. Would have liked to have seen that halftime speech. Well, Maybe. You, you don't want him walking out of the building just giving up either, so uh, that's good to see. I mean. This kid, he's a very strong guard. I, I probably look to see some good things out of him during the year. It's a nice under the radar game. Yeah. When he goes to the basket, he takes no prisoners. And he's got the body to do it, by the way. He's, he's not tall, but he's very strong. Misses both free throws. Tipped, and it will stay with the current Tigers. That's why it's such a frustrating game, because there's always things to work on. You make a great play, then you got to hit the free throws, then you don't play defense, and you get a little frustrated. Playing defense part always seems like a chore for the new guys, right? Sure My count it on the foul. The offense is always fun. Putting it in the basket is fun. Stopping the other guy from putting it in the basket, not as much fun. Right, putting the ball in the basket is always fun, but the work to getting the opportunity to put it in the basket is not as much fun either. Because uh, the other team, the other team guards you as well. But like you guys were saying, there's a lot of definitely some positives. Uh, this, this guard, Rose, has done some good things. He handles the ball, doesn't turn it over. Uh, he's aggressive with it. Um, Williams here has made a lot of nice plays. He just made a nice three-point play here, converted on the free throw. And before, on the defensive end, he couldn't get his hands on a rebound, but he made a nice little back tap play, tipped the ball to one of his teammates, which is a really heads-up play. You know, when you were saying before, find something, it looks like over the past couple of minutes they actually have between those three guys. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's just in individual, um, individual production is one thing to find. Also, you know, like in my thing, you know, how many defensive stops can you string together in a row? That's always good to good to do and how well are you executing your offense on consecutive and multiple possessions as well all things to look at when you when coach Amengo puts the puts the film in and I'm sure he's not using a VHS like we would like we were doing earlier no 
And they, and right there, they uh, they kind of forced the Sonia. They put that up a little quicker than he wanted to. And now they'll go to the line with their aggressiveness. And uh, they get another free throw opportunity here. And a 16-5 run in the last five minutes. So uh, maybe Jason, uh, maybe DeGrom is not the only good uh, player in Queens. Wow. It is Jason, right? Uh, Jacob. Jacob, right, Jacob, close Jacob right, Jacob. So you, right. you got a J. Okay. Eighty-four, sixty-three, six forty-nine to go. By the way, in that game tonight, do you think they'll uh, they'll be happy to learn a few lessons, or they want to win that game? No, I don't no. think there are any lessons at this point, Joe. <laughs> no, I, I think I think they'll take the win at this you point. You know, Joe Madden is a good manager after all. No, I don't no. think so. You know, Joe Madden was talking about the '69 Mets. He was a fan of theirs. I don't think he's a fan of the 2015 Mets, though. No, he wants not to beat at all. them. It's 8863, by you know, the way. You know who he said his favorite player is? Cleon Jones. Wow. Yeah. Whoop. Watch your back, kid. Yeah. And there's a charge. Yeah. No basket. Oh, he took that hard. You now they get a few fast break opportunities all of a sudden. They're a little closer to 100. And a full timeout taken by the alumni. I'm, I have to really uh, applaud the alumni. They really put on a good show here today, the, all the alumni. You have to really take your hat off to them. We don't have hats, but we have to salute them. <laughs> Sometimes you see an alumni game in the first three minutes, everybody's just taking three pointers from 30 feet away. You're like, oh my God, this is gonna be no, terrible. They, they were running some very good set plays. And yes. They looked like they put something into it. and. Uh, as I said, that's why I was asking Coach, you know, did they get together with Emengo and say, is there anything you want us to do maybe to help out and get your guys more primed uh, for the season? And maybe they did a little of that, too. It's funny, these guys don't really practice together or play together, except maybe one or two of them. You, you wouldn't really know it. They've been playing like a real team that's been playing for a while. So how do you, how do you finish if you're the coach in the game down by 25? Well, I mean, you certainly don't focus on the scoreboard right now. I mean, we've definitely seen some positive things from, from a handful of players. You want to keep playing playing hard, first of all, uh, playing together. You know, you don't want to see guys starting to, starting to lay down and quit, uh, which we have not seen at all. And you just make sure they, they, you know, stay on top of them with their execution, make sure they're running their stuff, make sure they're not, you know, worried about, you know, how much time is left or, or how, you know, what exactly what the score is. And he's going to reward the players that are playing hard um, he's going to keep these guys in the game. The guys who are in here now have been doing a pretty decent job. Right now, this combination has seen a lot of time on the court, so they're getting a little bit of a reward for that. Good ball movement. And still 15 on the shot clock. Trying to get to the 90-point mark. Birch going to the basket and put it in off glass. Tough shot. He kind of had to alter it on the way up. It's 90-63. You know, Birch, whether during his playing career here at Queensboro or now, anybody is, it gives him a handful in terms of that speed. Five and a half minutes to play. Rosa really barking out the instructions. And a nice layup by Jonathan Paul. 90-65. Joshua Lee. Leo inside. Little turnaround, no good. We're under five minutes to play. Boop. Nice bounce pass. 1967. By the way, these alumni have played some very good players over the years here in the community college ranks when they played at Queensboro. I mean, just a number of great players came in here. Leo lays it in, 92-67. We were talking about a few of them. Keon Alexander, uh, you could just go down the list. Uh, Kingsboro used to bring guys in here left and right when they had Hassan Duncan. And they played against those guys. And uh, they were all good teams. The team from BMCC last year. I wanted to give a quick shout out also. Uh, the Queensboro soccer team will be in the CUNY championship game Monday night. 
so good luck to them. Yeah. Four minutes to go in this one. Very exciting game on the collegiate level. And a foul is called. And, uh, you know, when, when you say that, uh, when you look at those rosters, you know, the Jody, Dr. Jody King teams that they played, and those were all good ball players. I mean, uh, some of those guys were outstanding. What was the best team you saw in the CUNY, Mike? I think of the Bronx team a few years ago with Shannon his last year when they almost won the whole thing. Yeah, I would say <clears throat> that was the most, that was a really deep team, really talented. I mean, they had guys who could really get up and down the floor, really score, hard to handle. Really and tough I, team. And honestly, their best scorer failed off in the middle of that year. He was terrific um, and didn't play again, you know, at, at Bronx. But even losing him, I mean, they had so many good players and, and, and they had just a lot of, uh, a lot of depth and, and size and scoring ability. They might have been the best. And, and Dr. King had a, had a lot of really strong teams at Hostos as well. And, and obviously, you know, a lot of, a lot of well-coached teams in the CUNY as well. And that, that makes, you know, good players even harder to play against, obviously. And, and, and David, you remember the, the host those teams with uh, Maverick Hodge and uh, oh yes, and their top uh, scorer Jeremiah there, Jeremiah Brown. They were just terrific teams. I mean, tremendous talent. And how about Hostos winning the region last year and going to nationals? And and and, it, and that's not even mentioning Hassan Duncan when he was coach over there at Kingsboro. The players that he brought in year after year, just tremendous players. 94-71, three minutes to go. Hassan won a few CUNY titles at Kingsborough, a few Coach of the Year awards. Yeah, he played a little center at the University of Penn, too, I think, or forward, one He's of the Pretty two. good there. Yeah. Had a buzzer beater against Princeton. He played for Fran Dunphy, who is now uh, at Temple. Counted on the foul. He took over for the Dean of Coaches over there. Hmm. Yeah. But you know what? Uh, and you know this, Mike. Uh, for every time you get a Temple job, you spend a lot of years on the road with LaSalle's and all the lower teams, Division threes, and then you got to work your way up there. And that's what Fran Dunphy did. Yeah, and no, all Fran goes way, way back. And, uh, you know, now he's at, at, at that high when level. When I was doing Temple, the yeah. Army games, he was assisting with Speedy Morris at, uh, Speedmo, uh, at LaSalle. At LaSalle, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, and then he was, well, of course, had, did a terrific job at Penn in, in, in the Ivy League, which is a super tough conference to coach in. You know what happens? Those guys see you and they say hello to you. You don't even know who they are because they were an assistant all the time. You weren't paying attention. Right, you don't always notice they the They know assistant. you. Right, right. <laughs> well, you don't always notice the assistant, but, you know, the, yeah, the, you yeah. know the, it's good to see, you know, an assistant who works hard and who hustles get his opportunity at whatever level that it is. And, and obviously, you know, a guy like Fran Dumfrey goes without saying, really took advantage of the opportunities that he had with some really strong teams at Penn. Seemed like every year it was either Penn or Princeton was winning that Ivy League. And, um, and now he obviously he's, he's, he's at Temple, you know, at a high level, replacing, you know, the great John Chaney who's been there for forever and has done, has done it all. Great coach. Nice jumper by Eric Light. 96-74, 220 to go. Sorry to leave you out there, David. We figured you could use a little rest right there. Oh, I appreciate it. Oh, okay. You saw the magic uh, number Mike talked about. Well, the uh, alumni get to 100. You've done your usual fabulous job. Oh, thank you. Bruton puts it in. 96-76, two minutes to go. White, with Bruton in his face, misses. So that would be a pretty big takeaway if they hold him to 99 or less. Remember they had 61 at halftime. Looked like it might really get away. It was a 33 point game with 12 minutes to go. But you know, you, you find out what type of team you have, I guess, when these kids come back in the gym next time and they start asking you, coach, let's get out there. I want to do some things. I want to check this out. I want to, you know, because they got to want to play ball, these kids. Yeah, but that's, that's always the first uh, thing that you need. You need guys who are committed and the guys who care about it 
and who want to be out there and not afraid to put the work in and understand that it's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, you know, just because you were a good player in high school, you come, you come to the college level, it's a little bit different, and you really got to put a lot of extra commitment in, time, and a lot of extra work in. Um, on, you know, on the court, obviously, in the weight room, with your conditioning, you know, obviously keeping yourself eligible in the classroom, all that goes into play. And, and, you know, Queensboro can definitely take some positives away, particularly in the second half. Who did they play next, Mike? Do you, you were I, mentioning it to me. Well, I looked at their preseason schedule. I know they have ASA on their, on their scrimmage schedule. you were schedule. telling me that's a very tough game, right? Right. I, I, I want to say it's their next scrimmage. There may be one other one that's in between. That's a scrimmage, right. Scrimmage, scrimmage. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. ASA is, is, is a local Division I uh, athletic team, so they're going to have their hands full, probably a very big team. So, you know, they're going to need to they're going to need to come together and and, you know, string together, you know, 40 minutes of strong basketball to stay in that game and to, and to give themselves a chance to win it. So but, you, when you play a scrimmage, you just divide up halves and you don't keep running score. And the, Well, a lot of times you'll reset the score at yeah. each session, uh, at like at halftime. You'll play 20 minutes, plus, you know, reset the score at zero, play another 20, and right. possibly play another 10 minutes after that. Right. Um, you know, if, if the referees allow it, usually you have to ask them. 110 to go. That's why I told Ben, uh, one of the assistants on the women's team at halftime, I thought the alumni, they were up by 28 at halftime. I said, I think they'll win by 17. It's an 18 point game with the minute to go. If we could do the math, who won the second half point uh, wise? <laughs> Queensboro did. Yeah. It was a 28 yeah. point game, and now it's yeah. 16. Right. And looks like they may keep them under 100, is what Mike spoke about beginning of the half take away some victories so they got a scrimmage second half win <laughs> 96 82 they don't have to shoot again although I'm sure they will light takes a shot and hits 98 82 hey that 100 is uh, looming at 20 seconds Jonathan Paul has had a good second half. That's what Mike Kerr is telling me. Wanted to give him the credit for it. Uh, almost a turnover. But the greatest thing about today was seeing all the guys and it, just seeing everybody's in uh, good health and uh, God bless them. And it's been a great day. Go. Well, they get to 100. Four seconds, three. Lee for three. And it's good. Triple digits. 101 there to 82. Yeah, broke the 100 mark. Look at that. It's no good. Well, uh, well, they still held them to 40 in the second half, which is a lot better than 61. After all, I mean, they were down by 33 with 12 minutes ago, and they could have packed it in. And who knows? We could have seen a 45-point game. No, it'll, 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 I'm sorry, it'll be interesting when we go talk to a Mengo a little bit before we leave or Simpson and we just ask him, what do you take out of that game? Do you take anything and just find out what he thinks, you know? I can't make an assessment. Mike can't make it. It all depends what you were looking for uh, right. today and maybe they got what they were looking for in some ways, like Mike said. Right. Any final thoughts? <clears throat> well, again, speaking of what Joe just said, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you know, there are some positive things that you need to take out. <coughs> Excuse me. And and <coughs> certainly some individual performances that were pretty good, particularly in the second half. But they have a ways to go, and Coach knows it. <coughs> um, so, you know, they have the work cut out for them. But we'll see how the, how the season go, um, opens up. <coughs> well, that was the alumni game. The alumni beat the current Tigers 101-82. to for Joe Massey and the coach Mike Kerr, this is QCC alum David Russell. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Somebody kill me. You okay? Uh, you okay? Mike? Couldn't talk. <laughs> <laughs>